many tech entrepreneurs do not look at private foundations uh, or, or family offices as relevant funds for them. And I think that you're getting here a very holistic from what Nomi said uh, at the beginning, uh, from the Israeli Innovation Authority's budgets, uh, all the way to um, private investors, family foundations. And uh, next we have um, two people who will hopefully <laughs> discuss um, <laughs> how Israel can and does attract capital from abroad um, here to be invested in a, a well, a more VC-like uh, matter. And for this, I'm very happy to invite Yuda Doron, um, PPD advisor and the managing partner of Greenfield Partners, and Sandrine Monsuma, managing partner of Bridges Israel. Thank you. Hi, Yuda. Hi. So, Omri, we will speak about uh, what you are asking. Um, Yuda, you want to start? Uh, well, you know, we, uh, I represent TPG. We have a, you know, impact uh, branch called RISE. And, uh, you know, we in Israel are part of it. I'll explain a little bit later. Uh, $1.6 billion. Uh, to invest in big impact projects. Uh, and you are kind of uh, more independent here in Israel, and just maybe you can explain how you attract uh, foreigner, uh, you know, money to to impact in Israel and what their strategy and so on. So, yes, um, I'm a managing partner in a fund called Bridges, Bridges Israel. Um, some of you may know Bridges uh, started in the UK in 2002 um, uh, as one of the first impact investment funds in the world. They were not at the time recognized as an impact investor. Today, uh, the term is, is there. Uh, but together with my partners, uh, Gal and Ran, uh, we founded uh, Bridges Israel a little bit over a year ago. Um, we uh, uh, are not a subsidiary of the UK fund. We are an Israeli fund, uh, raised our own capital, and uh, we were very um, uh, clear on wanting to engage the Israeli institutional uh, capital, so Dalia, sorry. Uh, we do have a lot of private investors as well, as you know, but we do have also the investments of three Israeli institutions, um, uh, one bank, one uh, insurance company, and one um, uh, asset manager. And we are very conscious of that. Um, and we know that we are a little bit like a, a test case for them. Uh, our, uh, the investment in bridges is not going to uh, move their needle, but um, if we are uh, going to meet their expectations, uh, I think it's going to be very beneficial to. Uh, the ecosystem here. So, um, you, that, do you want to, uh, shall we start with the spectrum of capital a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, I prefer to have the presentation kind of a... Yes, uh, the a clicker is, I think the clicker is there. It was never my strength, so <laughs> prefer, prefer to have the, uh, we prepare a few slides. Is it? Yeah, can you... So, I'll do it, yeah. We, we, um, we found out a few days ago when we met that we are using exactly the same terminology, which is very encouraging. Uh, Bridges speaks about the spectrum of capital. You did hear Amit and Marisa talk uh, in the morning about how capital started by residing at, you know, both ends of the, the spectrum, financial only, with Milton Friedman saying, um, the only social responsibility of a business is to make money and philanthropists uh, that were seeking impact only. And as the um, uh, investors uh, started with responsible investing, which is negative screening, avoiding harm, sustainable investing, which is uh, uh, positive screening, and then impact investing, which is seeking solutions to societal issues, um, you see that TPG and, and Bridges are really using the same terminology, and both are funds 
are funds that uh, are located at the uh, very competitive end of the spectrum, which means that we are seeking um, market rate financial returns and um, um, doing our best not to compromise on returns um, because we are doing impact. And we are doing so in order to attract big capital. So TPG 1.6 billion and Bridges Israel, a very humble uh, 60 million to date, but all focused on impact investments. And, um, and this is uh, what we want to do. So Yuda, can you describe your uh, investment process and investment criteria? So uh, we are an impact fund meaning that we first of all go through a process of impact. And if you look at our investors, I and mean, we have Bill Gates and we have you know, amazing people as part of the, uh, you know, the fund of the uh, uh, limited partners. So we go to a process of impact. Is it belong to impact or not? Once it crossed the impact line, we basically deal with it with a, just another capital investment. No different than it's the same team, the same criteria. And what we have done to assess our impact, we actually funded a company called Analytics. It's a completely independent company now that basically assess uh, if investment is impact or not impact. Uh, of course, you know, you, we cut corner here and there. You know, we take a little bit more risk. You're going to see in a minute the area that we invest in is a little bit more risky, but uh, basically it's the same processes after you cross the line of impact. Uh, again, we do big uh, investment, and I wonder what you guys are doing in Israel because you find big investments a little bit hard. Exactly. So in Israel, um, we f first and foremost we apply the Bridges uh, Global uh, Strategy of Investments. So I'll start with the bottom part of the slide, we are looking uh, to invest in uh, underserved markets with specific emphasis on health and wellness, education and skills, sustainable living. And um, the primary strategy uh, of, of Bridges is to target Israel's underserved population, which we um, uh, call the socio-economic periphery. Um, and the rationale for that, and sorry, I'm not going to talk about tech now because this is not tech investments. Uh, the rationale for that is that Israel has a, a tale of two economies, we like to say. It's a, it's a very thriving economy with a very strong uh, GDP per capita growth, uh, double the OECD rate in the last 20 years. Um, uh, a great success story, the startup nation, everybody wants... To, to praise Israel for its amazing economic achievement, but Israel um, leaves behind uh, large parts of its uh, social economic periphery. Uh, we have the highest poverty rate in the OECD. There are uh, segments in the Israeli society with a very low participation in the Israeli economy. Uh, we have a very high Gini coefficient, which means we have uh, uh, one of the highest inequality uh, measures in the world. So we believe that for an impact investment fund, this is an opportunity because uh, where there is a gap, there is an opportunity for um, uh, stronger growth. Uh, so uh, the vast majority of our investments will not be in uh, technology companies, but in uh, Israeli companies located or serving the socioeconomic periphery in Israel, um, uh, private equity type of investments, um, and uh, we already made two investments uh, um, in, in that strategy, and, and uh, uh, we are looking for more. The second strategy, our secondary strategy, will be in tech and is in tech. Um, we are targeting uh, Israeli technology companies that um, have uh, the potential to create global impact, so local impact, global impact. And uh, Yuda, we are um, uh, not looking for very big investments, but um, also not early stage. So 
Uh, we saw a few early stage investors early on, and it's great because the ecosystem needs all stages. Uh, but we are looking for uh, technology companies that are already uh, with the final product, have already customer validations, and are already selling or about to start selling. Um, and um, we will invest in those companies. And hopefully, when they grow a little bit, then you can invest in those. So, um, Yuda, can you describe um, what sectors are mostly interested for PPG? So, again, we look at it as impact, but we are all over. If you can see, we are in healthcare, education, microfinancial services, food, agriculture, energy. Again, if we gravitate into Africa, India, uh, because, you know, there's more need for impact over there. And we definitely in Israel looking for technology to complement what we do. Education is one of them. I meet almost on a daily basis with a small Israeli company to complement what we do, uh, mostly in India. Energy for sure, food and agriculture. Uh, there's so many startups here in Israel, just hard to believe, uh, that can complement and uh, we can, for one, we can help them in those markets. And we always make introduction to the big companies, but more than that, we can basically, uh, you know, invest, buy, or partnership. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of the diversity is 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 large. And you know, you, you spoke about your 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 uh, in, uh, your uh, investment, but can you give us a few example of example that you have done in Israel? Yes, I can. So we made four investments to date, and uh, um, you can see them here. Ven, Andrip, Kandu, and uh, Abraham Hostels and Tour. Um, what you can see is that we are all speaking the same language. The, the SDG language is really today our common language. Um, and what you uh, can see also is that when we make an investment like you, we first look at their impact and we try to assess their impact, and we make an impact thesis on every investment, and then um, if we have a go, no go uh, on the impact, if we have a go, then we look at the investment like, like Apex, like a regular financial investor, and we are not impacted by the impact score of the company when we look at their uh, financial attractiveness. So you can be the uh, the most impactful company uh, in Israel, but if you don't uh, meet our financial criteria, we will unfortunately not be the right uh, investment vehicle for you. Um, I want to uh, give a specific example because um, you were asking what international um, uh, investors are looking for when they come to Israel. So very honestly, our uh, private equity investments are less uh, interesting to uh, foreign capital or foreign funds, but our tech for good investments attract a lot of interest. And um, when Bridges uh, decided to uh, cooperate with Galeran and myself, uh, of course it was partly thank you, thanks to uh, our uh, co-founder Sir Ronald Cohen, but also because uh, they were very interested in the uh, tech for good scene in Israel, and they are uh, watching us very closely. Um, we are now uh, embarking on uh, trying to cooperate with them on uh, measurement systems for, for technology companies, um, and are very proud to uh, cooperate on that uh, initiative. Um, an example uh, would be Endrip, um, a tech for good company that we invested in. And you see that for every company uh, that we invested, we uh, um, specify what are the challenges that we are trying to address. And then we are making an investment thesis and an impact thesis. In this case, um, the challenges that we were trying to address are water scarcity, food insecurity, and inefficient and expensive irrigation. Because despite 30 years of drip irrigation technology, and uh, uh, the success of Netafim and other companies in this space, only 3% of the world um, uh, irrigated land is drip irrigated, and 85% of the world 
is still uh, flood irrigated, like you see uh, in the picture here. And uh, Professor Uri Shani, one of the world's uh, leader in uh, uh, water technology, uh, managed to uh, create uh, a system to uh, irrigate uh, fields uh, with drip irrigation based on gravity alone. Uh, we don't have time to go too much into details, but uh, this is exactly the type of tech for good companies that fit our strategy and uh, that are interesting also for um, international funds or international capital. And uh, Yuda, you wanted to give us an example of TPG. Uh, just, just a few examples. You see in the US, Latin America, India, China, uh, education, uh, you know, water, cheap real estate. I want to focus on a company called Zipline. Can you, can you ask? So Zipline, uh, we just in, uh, finished an investment in a drone. It's not a drone. It's actually a plane that carry blood. You know, strangely enough, in Africa, you just cannot transfer blood to hospital. So this uh, airplane is basically you upload, uh, you know, blood into it, and it basically you launch it, and from there, this is an autonomous uh, airplane that basically parachutes the uh, blood to, uh, to the hospital or to the needs. And that's just like thousands of flights uh, a day. I mean, hard to believe, but you can make money out of transfer blood in areas like, you know, India, Africa, and whatever. Hopefully, we'll extend it. This is a very good example where we're looking for drone and autonomous uh, technology in Israel to complement to complement what we do uh, with the with the zipline uh, technology. I wish I could show you a video. Uh, we are we out don't, of we time. We do a video. <laughs> you, you'll be amazed by uh, this uh, airplane. That just just an example. Of course, the other one, education, water. You can visualize. This is uh, really excited. Uh, to, I was part of the uh, the team that invested in it. So uh, you know, just kind of. Uh, you know, just kind of the connection between Israel and what we do in large scale. I just uh, want to say that uh, Omri and Akto, you've uh, done with Raida. What an amazing job you've done here, guys. It's uh, really amazing. Thank you for, uh, for inviting us. Um, I also want to refer to what Amit uh, Batya said in the morning. Um, I am very proud to be part of the Israeli National Advisory Board on Impact Investing that is headed by Aaron, who will speak later. Um, we are really trying to uh, advance the, the ecosystem. Uh, we think that um, more and more people coming into this space, uh, investors, entrepreneurs, um, is really something that we all aspire to because um, uh, like the high-tech, ecosystem, uh, if we want, uh, you know, 7,000 startups and um, uh, every other company in Israel speaking the impact language, and there needs to be more of us. So uh, happy to cooperate. And again, thank you. Thank you, Yuda. Thank you. Thank you so much.